Now, in a recent article, uh, you were very polite about this program. <laughs> I'll come I was, back I was. to Molly the dog in a minute, uh, whose friend is actually a pit bull terrier just waiting outside the door there. Um, <laughs> you said you'd rather not be polite to particular politicians. Yeah. Why? Well, OK, I, 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 in that, I was I, I just come off doing... Um, being backstage in the green room at Peston's show, which is a very inferior copy of this, I think. And, uh, and um, I like him already. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I was sort of sitting with um, Suzanne Evans from UKIP, and obviously, as I'm, I'm a stereotype member of the Metropolitan Liberal Elite, so I, uh, I felt that I ought to disagree with her. But then on the other hand, I thought, well, we're backstage in this place where you've been taken to do a job. I couldn't work out what the right ethics of it was. And um, I think, you know, with that little bit of film you, you played in there with the cast of that musical addressing Pence directly, there seem to be all sorts of problems now where we're, people feel very polarised about what's happening in the world and we don't quite know what the rules of engagement are now. Because you said you wanted to stop doing, doing shows uh, like this so that you stop <laughs> meeting people that you really think you should despise but felt friendly to watch. Yeah, well, it is well, actually, I don't <laughs> like Dan Hannan because he's always slagging me off in the paper, but I, kept, but I sat there quietly listening to what he was talking about and I heard him say a brilliant sentence. What was that? He said that um, Matthew Parrish lives in a Spanish cave. And if I'd got into an argument with him, I would not have heard that sentence. So now I know, so now you that know piece you of information. Be... So it's the value of politeness. You see, if you, uh, if you He's end got a cave up... in Spain, apparently, that he lives in, Matthew Parrish. Uh, it's, He's a it's troglodyte. Next, it's next that? to Michael's cave. <laughs> it's got, well, then, and then... There the, goes the neighbourhood. Well, then the SMP's <laughs> bloke said they're all living in caves there now. They've been gentrified, the well, caves. Oh, that's sad. So I, know, I now know that as a result of politeness. And I wouldn't have known that if I'd gone in, you know, arguing with everyone. I guess the danger of what you're saying is if you end up only speaking to people that you are broadly in agreement with yeah. or listening to people you're broadly in agreement with, you end up, which is very much like America, if you're right wing, you watch Fox News. Yeah. If you're left, you watch MSNBC, yeah. radio stations catered to. No. You know, you, it's an echo chamber. Yeah, I think this is a problem. And obviously, something I've been trying to write about in the, in the new show is that because we can now, because our next destination on the internet is generated by algorithms, if you like this, see this. Yes. Then you tend to, people tend to go down wormholes that where, where they only follow their own views. And the days when you would read a newspaper and accidentally come across a story that was perhaps about something you didn't already know about are sort of on the way out. So I think the, the polarised results in the Brexit vote and in the Trump vote are partly about this thing. And, and for example, before I came out tonight to do my show, at 5.30 I always look at the internet to see if anyone I've got a joke about has suddenly lost their job because anything's happening. Like and I saw the trending story on Twitter was that Clint Eastwood has refused an honour from Obama and said, he's not my president, right? Yeah, well, he hasn't, has he? Three minutes later, I searched, it's a fake oh, it's news story that's done. It's but, the, but the problem now is that, that th this is out there everywhere and people can follow fake news stories. Don't? There's no... Th th there's no, no filter, there's no yeah, editing, no filter, in other words. Yeah. And, uh, let me go. come back to the yeah. politeness bit. You, you always strike me as a very polite chap, Michael. Do you think you've been too polite over the years? Uh, Possibly a little <laughs> too polite, but um, but I do I do value politeness, and I've also been amazed how much politeness I've received because you know when I was a politician I was quite unpopular, and yet people I met in the street, on the whole, uh, you know, either decided not to speak to me or would come and speak to me very very politely. Mm. I've only had two or three instances of people being sort of really foul mm. to me in the street, which considering I was quite high profile in those days is quite surprising. And you're very polite too, Liz, but oh, uh, in that campaign that. people were not always polite to you. No, they weren't, but um, I think you can be uh, angry about an issue but polite to the person and it is, uh, you know, I certainly remember, well you remember this during the referendum campaign, uh, I was in one of your debates with uh, Dan Hannan and Farage on the other side and you have to see them backstage and you want to be polite, you're not going to get into a big chat, but you have got to talk to people who don't agree with you. I mean, I do. I have to knock on any door, find out what people think, and some of them are deeply angry and completely against my party, but you can hopefully do it in a polite way. We need to end. Just tell us briefly what are you up to now? What's the tour? I'm just, I've got a new show called Content Provider that's on till February in London and then I'll be on the road for a year and a half around the country, as long as the news still has some relationship with the story I originally wrote for the show. Everybody's being polite about it. Come back. Thanks very much. Don't, don't mm. neglect us.